art can mean different things to different people. For me, it's all about the joy of creativity. So if you draw, paint, write, dance, sing, craft, play air guitar, or even sculpt using nothing more than mashed potatoes, consider yourself an artist and join our conversation. For the next half hour, meet the artist and learn about their inspiration while we all enjoy the beauty of creativity. Welcome to Season 2 of Art Talk with John Cole Artist. Hey, good evening, everyone. It's John Cole Artist, and I want to welcome you all to this evening's Art Talk podcast. With me tonight, I've got a very special guest. I'd like to welcome Garrett Lowry to the program. Welcome, Garrett. Hi, John. Nice to see you again. Thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Garrett, you are, uh, and I'm looking at your bio, and let me just say that your bio is amazing. Um, you know, when I read through this, it seems like you've held many different you know, that you've held many different roles in your life. Um, and there's a lot of things that you like to do. You were a cowboy. You were, I'm still you, know, you I was going to say you probably still are. I could tell by the hat. Um, <laughs> you've got uh, business experience. Uh, you're a spiritual leader and you're also co-owner of um, the Western Spirit Enrichment Center based out of Sedona, Arizona. That is all true. I've led a full life and it's been a blessed life. Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, could you tell the audience a little bit more about yourself? Certainly. Well, I was uh, born and raised in St. Louis, a uh, family of six. And uh, my family broke up when I was young. So I ended up spending 10 years in a boys' orphanage oh. in St. Louis. And uh, when I left that, I went in the army, was an army officer, uh, went to night school for my college, majored in business finance that led me into the investment business and starting a lot of businesses and becoming a spiritual entrepreneur. Mm. And then I sold a business in St. Louis in the mid eighties and moved to Arizona and became a cowboy. Fell in love with the Western way of life. And that's where I am today. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely something something attractive about that. Um, at Christine, you remember Christine from earlier this uh, yes. actually in January of 2023? Yep, she says hello, beautiful souls. Thanks, Christine, for yes, tuning Christine. in. Yeah, she um she has been uh, supporting me through this whole podcast thing since the very beginning. So it's really nice that she's able to to watch these things. Um. And I also, by the way, want to say hello to everybody that's watching the replay. I know uh, I got a couple messages earlier that folks aren't going to be able to tune in tonight due to other obligations, but they definitely want to want to see you, Garrett. Um, so um, thank you for taking the time. It's my pleasure. Nice yeah. to be here. Yeah, yeah. The West, you know, I, um, I, I've been to Sedona specifically a couple times. And uh, then last year, of course, I took a, took a vacation out uh, to... Southern Arizona, Superstition Mountain Area, Apache Junction, things like that. And there really is definitely something special about that area. We were talking a little bit about that be before we got on the program. Um, now, now, when you left, you said you left St. Louis and then moved to Arizona? or That's correct, in the mid-80s, yes. Yeah, and what was what was the big draw for that? I mean, you know, it sounds like that you had this this one life and then you you – basically decided to start this new life in Arizona. What was what was the draw for you? Well, I think when I was uh, 20 years old, I went skiing in Colorado, and that's when I fell in love with the West. And ah. since that time, I would come out here every year uh, skiing in, in uh, California, Nevada, Utah, uh, Colorado, and in the summer, come out camping. Brought mm -hmm. my children out here. So I just fell in love with the Western way of life and and when I sold a business in St. Louis, that was the opportunity that I took to move to Arizona full time and uh, and to become a cowboy and fall in, fell in love with the West and the cowboy way of life. Right, right. And that 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 seems to be obviously that's inspired you. Right. Because, you know, you, you've done some amazing things since moving out there in the 80s. Well, I've always been in love with uh, nature and the outdoors, and I've always mm -hmm. been an adventurer. Um, I've been a scuba diver, a skydiver, I pilot a glider plane, a uh, mountain climber, a rock climber. I've done some of the uh, large mountains, the, the uh, 14ers in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, just like a, a, a 
the adrenaline juice every now and then. And the West offers that. It's so beautiful. And being centered here in Arizona, you're so close to these other beautiful places, Colorado, Utah, California, Mexico even. So it's a beautiful place to be, and it has everything that I love and long for. And um, when I moved here, I had retired from selling a business in St. Louis, uh, and I started a, a tourist business out here called Cowboy Adventures. And we wanted to give our guests uh, a little piece of the authentic cowboy life from the 1860s and 1870s. Mm-hmm. And so myself and all my cowboys wore authentic uh, custom-made clothing from that era. Right. And uh, we did horseback rides and Jeep tours and river rafting and hot air balloon rides and big corporate parties up, up to 2,000 people at a time and gunfight skits and bus holdups. And it was a great adventure. So imagine riding your horse all day and then going to a big party every evening. Mm-hmm. Fun. <laughs> it sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and with, uh, with your current role working at the, um, at the Western Spirit Ranch, um, you know, I, you know, I was lucky enough. My wife and I were lucky enough uh, back in January to come out for one of your retreats, and yes. you know, uh, your wife Marion did a did a phenomenal job. Um, you know, uh, talking about the the spiritual side of uh, of us, of people, of relationships, and things like that. But then we also had the opportunity to to take some hikes, right? We I think you were you were one of the guides for um, was it uh, 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 forgive me uh, uh, we did Rock? Bell Rock, I believe and right. maybe Cathedral Rock and along yeah. uh, Oak Creek Red Rock Crossing so I don't ask so many great places to 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 explore and and to right. hike um, it's a wonderful place to live and when I moved out here um, I met Marion uh, twenty three years ago. Uh, we shared the same spiritual beliefs. We had shared the same love of nature and the outdoors and uh, put our heads together and came up with Western Spirit Enrichment Center, which uh, gives us the opportunity to offer spiritual retreats to individuals and to couples and to help them heal uh, past wounds and, and old habits. Um, and we expose them to new ideas and resources and tools to help them do that healing and then to learn new things to enable them to uh, live a, a life of, of joy and peace and love and kindness that we all strive for. Right. Right. And that's what we do now. It's been 23 years later. We've had people from all over the world, so it's been very rewarding and we've been quite blessed. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it was an amazing experience for us. And I know that I was very impacted by it in a very positive way. I know when you use the word impact, sometimes it sounds negative, but it really was a, it was a uh, life-changing experience, I think. I mean, because I think, um, you know, anything like that, when we're looking at healing, when we're looking at, you know, being in a place that's inspirational, I think Sedona specifically is, was really a good choice because there, it is a very inspirational uh, location. It's a very spiritual location. It is. It has an international reputation as being a spiritual place and and every kind of uh, uh, practitioner you would ever desire is here in Sedona. And of course, Sedona is well known for the sacred energy vortex spots that were known as power spots to Native Americans a thousand years ago. And we always take our retreat guests there and sometimes some powerful healing happens. Yeah, yeah. For anybody, I think that- and What you believe. What's that? It really comes from within and what you believe. Well, it does, you know, and I think it's uh, it's like with any kind of artistic thing, right? We're going to talk about your art here in a little bit, but you know, there's there's a certain um, there's a certain connection that happens with certain places. Um, I think Sedona is one of those locations, and I and I could probably name half a dozen others. You know, places that just feel powerful. They feel bigger than you. Yes, yes. Mount Shasta in Northern California is another one that Mary and I have been to several times, and very powerful place. Right. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I know Mount Shasta as well as Sedona and there's a couple other spots that are also known for UFOs. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, right. And I know it, it sounds a little bit funny, but I mean, it does suggest that that these places do have some kind of legitimate um, power, right? Um, they do. They, yeah. there, are, there are guides in Sedona who will guarantee they'll take you out on a UFO tour and guarantee you'll see one. And we actually had uh, uh, 
the unusual experience of seeing a UFO from our front porch just a couple of months ago, and Marion has it on tape. It is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and I envy you. I remember seeing that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, inspiration for me, I think, is is very, very important. Uh, whether or not it's writing, because you're an also you're also an author. I am. Within the last ten years, I learned to write books, and I published four of them, starting with my autobiography. And uh, the common theme is spirituality and and inspiration. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's been a wonderful journey for me, also. Now, do you have any more books planned? Not at the moment. No. No. Uh, we go to Italy in the summer, and we do uh, retreats there. And I've used that time, three months in Italy, to uh, to write books. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have nothing planned this this particular summer. We'll see what comes. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, and all those books are available on Amazon? Indeed they are, yes. Amazing, yeah. So, well, congratulations on that. I think, um, you know, I'm in the process right now of writing a self-help book uh, through uh, our mutual friend, Allison Roberts. And, sure. um you know, writing, writing books is a, it, it can be a challenging process sometimes, I think, um, you know, especially when you're, when you're writing, you know, perhaps some vulnerable, vulnerable moments or some things that really, you know, are sacred to yourself. However, I think there's, there's a real value in that because I think our stories uh, impact other people in ways that we probably don't even know. Well, that's my purpose in writing, and I hope that is true. And and if just one person's life has changed positively because of it, then all the effort has been worthwhile. No, I absolutely agree. Uh, so I, I I really was interested. One 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 of many reasons I wanted to get you on the get you on this podcast was really to talk about your artwork. Um, you're really good at painting. Well, thank you. That's nice to hear. Yes, yeah, um, are you? Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, but I wanted uh, to share with the audience. Um, and of course, if you're listening to this in your car and you don't have video, you can't see it. But I would like to, uh, you know, show our visual audience some of your artworks. Would you mind if I shared? Please, please do. Yes. Okay. Maybe we could talk a little bit about them then. So, um, Wait, so what I gonna... go ahead. Say again? Oh, I was going to say what I ended up doing was I scoured your wife's Facebook page to find these. For some reason, she she must be very proud of your work because she definitely uh, likes to bring attention to it, which is good. That's a good thing. She's she's not only a strong supporter; she's my agent. So, if you, <laughs> if you want to make any bids, that. contact her. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, now, I was just going to mention that the, the background to me becoming an artist is interesting because my my grandson Coulter. Mm -hmm. uh, has been an artist, is an accomplished artist today, and has been an artist since he was a small child. And I've always admired that in him. I've always wanted to be a painting artist, and I never thought of myself as creative, but friends and family always reminded me that I am because of the many businesses I've started and the unique things that went into that business. Mm -hmm. I never thought of creativity that way in, until they told me that. Um, but I still always wanted to paint. And so uh, one, one year, a few years ago at Christmas time, I asked Coulter to teach me mm -hmm. and he gave me some lessons. And he gifted me that Christmas with some supplies. He suggested I go take some courses, which I've done. And then I just started painting. And I found it a, a wonderful release. It's very meditative. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're painting, you're just totally focused on that. And it's, uh, it's an adventure. It may yep. start with the idea of a subject, and I like to do Southwest theme things. So it could be a horse or a Native American or a cowboy or a landscape in Sedona. So I've got something in mind, but I have no idea what it's going to look like at the end, at the finish. And so I'm totally immersed in the project. I'm experimenting with colors. I love, uh, I, I paint in the style of Matisse. I, I love bold colors and styles. Mm -hmm. And, um, when it's finished, it's it's such an accomplishment. It's a surprise to me. And and I've sold some of them. And it's even great when someone else admires it and is willing to put a, a monetary value on it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just forging ahead with it. No, good, good. I, I, and I'm glad because I think the world needs your art. Um, this, this first one, I'm not sure. Um, I had 
names on these things because I know your paintings are named, which by the way is a great thing that you do that because a lot of folks don't name their paintings. And I think each painting has its own personality, just like people and we put names to people. So why not do our painting? <laughs> don't uh, ask me the names, there have been too many. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to check with Mary and my agent. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, I should reach out to your agent. Um, oh, and Christine, Christine says, uh, just bring this up. She says, Garrett's paintings are stunning. Thank you, Christine. You're su sweet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, what I did was, so I picked out five, five that I found um, <clears throat> on Facebook because I thought that uh, they really showed a showed a range of the different subject matter that you use. And of course, like you said, they're they're very bold in color, which I think is a beautiful approach. I think you know, a lot of times people do tend to shy away from the really rich colors, which I think in some cases is a mistake because colors uh, have meaning as well, right? They're very powerful. You know, in this one here with this vivid yellow, you know, with the blue at the butterfly um, specifically, and then of course that orange center, um, it really generates an emotion in the viewer, you know? especially with yellow because yellow is a very bright and sunny color so it immediately can change your mood which is the really fascinating thing about art it's my favorite color so i do uh, i am favorable to to yellow and uh, and because it's bold and colorful it expresses my personality uh some people have called me colorful some of you stronger words but uh <laughs> that's what they express for me right um let's see what's the next one we have here this one's also gorgeous. Ah, thank you. The hummingbird. Yeah. Yeah. What I really like about this is the patterning that you did on the bird. Uh, it's got a very patchwork look, which is, which is really a, a very interesting approach for animals. I mean, I think there's many ways that you can paint an animal, um, but I think it, it really brings out the fact that hummingbirds, when they're not flapping their wings at a thousand miles per hour, are really colorful animals. And they're so special to Arizona. They're they're everywhere in the state, and uh, in the winter months they go south to uh, to um, a canyon down south. I forget the name of it. Mm -hmm. And they're there by the tens of thousands. And I always remember a picture that uh, I saw in Arizona Highways magazine years ago, where a man painted bright red on his lips, opened his mouth full of water, and got a picture of a hummingbird taking the water out of his mouth. <laughs> Oh my heavens! Really. That was partially the inspiration for that one. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm using two computer screens, and sometimes they don't want to do what I want them to do. So give me two seconds here while I figure out how to operate my IT. Good for you. I'm I'm over challenged with one. And there we go. <laughs> Took me a second. Yeah, this one is it. As far as subject matter, you mentioned Southwest, Southwest, and I can see that in the colors and in and, and, and the subject matter, but is there a specific sub subject matter that you prefer or is it whatever happens to inspire you at the time? It, it is a Southwest. Um, excuse me, here's mm -hmm. a picture of a, of a Native American uh, that I painted. Oh, I love that. You can see that. Yep. And, and they are very colorful with, with the type of clothing that they wear. So um, I'm partial to anything Southwest. Uh, of course, the Red Rocks of Sedona mm -hmm. offer unlimited opportunities there. And, uh, and the cowboy life, um, cowgirl life, I should say also, not to be sexist. Uh, nothing makes a, a woman more beautiful than wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> or a man more handsome, right? Just saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's why when I went on my trip last summer, I had to make sure I wore a cowboy hat the whole time. Oh, yeah. You have to get one when you check into the state. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, and this one, you know, I, I brought this picture up. It's it, so, so for those that can't see, it's it, it's a heart shape at the bottom. There's a silhouette of a, of a man and a woman dancing. And then of course, the sun. And it looks like it's, uh, you know, uh, Arizona Mountains someplace. Right. Um, this was interesting. Yes. Is it? Yeah. Because when I, because I was looking through the scope of the ones that Miriam had posted and this was the one that stood out because it, it just felt different to me. Was there a specific inspiration behind this painting? Um, I believe I painted that for some friends of ours um, 
who love the West and and love dancing and and Mary and I on our first date went dancing mm -hmm. and so that that has a special place in my heart um, when I when I had my tourist business uh, Cowboy Adventures I taught Western style dancing uh, to our guests and so uh, that's always special so you've got the sun the moon the the, uh, the red rocks the dancing the joy that comes out of that picture to me. Yeah, no, I think that one word sums it up. I think that's it. just something about that caught my eye. It's really a, a very nice piece. Well, you can see they're dancing in the clouds. They are, in fact. <laughs> uh, okay, this this one I love as well. Yeah. You know, yeah, this Native one. Native American uh, war horse. Yeah, just, just I love the design. I love the detail on that. And the, the rocks in the right-hand corner. Uh, again, uh, the red rocks of Sedona. Right. Yeah, I, I really like that. I like the not only the yellow, because you're right, yellow does seem to be your favorite color. It, it seems to be prominent in, in many of your paintings. Yeah, that's um, a Palomino with a, sort of a blue-black uh, mane and tail. Right, right. Yeah, and clearly yeah. it's got that Native American influence as well, a war horse, right? <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. And I think those were the pictures that I selected. Now, in the meantime... Uh, yeah, I notice in the back you've got what looks like a cougar uh, yeah. towards the back. Another uh, war horse. Oh yeah. And, now, do you uh, do you freehand all your drawings before you paint them? Uh, oh yes, yes. Yep. Is, is there another way? Am I missing something? Well, no, there's many different ways to get an image from point A to point B. I'm just curious. <laughs> they're, they're not paint by numbers. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I wasn't suggesting that. Not, not at all. Not at all. Um, no, very, but very I beautiful take, work. I had to take a drawing class to learn how to do that. It's, it's quite difficult, frankly. I find it difficult. And I'm yeah, terrible at faces. Well, yeah. How about I, you? What's your secret for faces? Well, you know what? Uh, my secret for faces is to not do them. <laughs> yeah, I um I think I remember years ago, years ago, <laughs> and I think I have an old Polaroid of this someplace. Um I had uh when I was married the first time living in Buffalo, uh this was right right after I got out of high school, but before I joined the Coast Guard. I had that short there was a short period in between when I was just like this married guy living in the city. And um, you know, I hadn't rediscovered painting until maybe 2016 or 2017. But prior to that in the eighties is, you know, I took some art classes in high school and I kind of enjoyed it. Right. But anyway, make a long story short, I thought, well, I'll do a portrait of my wife. And uh, I didn't even get as far as the face because what it looked like, I, I painted her like a linebacker for God's sakes, Gary. <laughs> and I knew, I knew that painting was not going to go anywhere. So uh, yeah. You know, it's funny because you mentioned drawing and drawing is probably where I struggle the most. I mean, I, I think I can paint, but getting that drawing right sometimes can be very challenging. Oh, I agree. And there's there's many that I've done that I've taken a knife to at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a process that's enjoyable. Well, Not right, right. Product. Yeah. Now, Karen Albert, who's a friend of mine and... Uh, she says, hi, John. I'm so glad I hopped on. Garrett's paintings are beautiful. I love the bright colors. Thank you, Karen. I've listened to you on John's show in the past. Amazing. And then, um, Christine, oh, this is a good question. Do you use your paintings in your program? Um, I do not, other than to have them on the walls of our classroom where we hold the, the workshops and people see them, comment about them, or maybe make an offer to buy them. Um, but that's that's an interesting suggestion. We may have to figure out how to uh, how to uh, include them in the program some way. Yeah, that's that, that it really actually is an interesting idea because I know when we were um, when we were attending those classes there back in January, I know there was a couple couple times when you know during various meditations we would um, you know basically talk about. Uh, how the meditation went and whether or not there was any messages or anything, you know, and, and I do remember uh, for me specifically was, it was very native American focus. Now, I don't know if that's because I was in Arizona, you know, or whether <laughs> or not it was, 
Well, you were well, right. I mean, I don't really know, but it would have been, it would be interesting. And I never did. And I probably should. And I probably still can, right? Is kind of paint those impressions because, mm -hmm. you know, I think having something like that, you know, may give, may give people a different perspective on what it is that they're feeling or seeing or whatnot, you know, irrespective are, of if they can draw or not, because I know I can't draw that well. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, there's uh, certainly a lot of uh, misperceptions about Native Americans in Arizona and the West. When I first moved here, I was so uh, enchanted with the area and its history that I read many, many books on the Arizona history, on the Old West, on, on the legends of the Old West and Native American culture. And Native yeah. American history from both sides, the white and the Native American. And I became a bit of an amateur historian in that I would give talks to groups and I would dress in authentic 1870s clothing. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I felt that I was on a mission to educate people as to what the true picture was, not the Hollywood version yeah. of what the Old West really was like. And yeah, that's I why think I'm inspired in my paintings. Yeah, no, I think that's fantastic. I know that, um, you know, from my own perspective on that particular subject, you know, that's the thing that, that, that the older I get, the more I realize. And that is that, um, you know, the whole idea of history, you know, all of history is subjective. And I don't know if we all understand that completely, but <laughs> history is all subjective, right? Unless you were there. And even if you're there, you're liable to interpret it your own way. And I think that, you know, having the ability to critical think and do the research and learn the history, especially when you move someplace, Garrett, and that's so important. You know, I've often said this to my wife, you know, I, being in the Coast Guard, I've moved around a lot. You know, I've lived in California, lived in Hawaii, lived in West Virginia, for Pete's sake, you know, Coast Guard in West Virginia, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, when you're at a place and, and, and you really take the time to learn the history and, and then understand, you know, the different segments of the population that that lived there, even though you're not from there, but that lived there before, you really, I think, get a, a richer sense and it really makes your experience richer, you know? Exactly. So, it gives you a greater appreciation of the footsteps that you're walking in. Oh yeah, it really does. And and even if it's not footsteps that you're necessarily proud of later on down the road as, 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 uh, you know, uh, sixth or seventh generation separated from, there's still value in understanding both sides because I think it helps us then be more uh, open to differing perspectives. Yes, absolutely. You know, and you mentioned one of my other uh, creative endeavors uh, is writing. Mm -hmm. And the third book I wrote, The Many Lives of a Reluctant Spirit Guide, as told by White Feather, who was an Apache warrior. And White Feather is my spirit guide. Oh. And I met him many years ago in meditation. Mm -hmm told me that he was a Native American living in what is now the territory of Arizona right. uh, in the 15th century. Mm. And he was an Apache warrior and later a chief. And he told me his whole history. And that, that we connected through that history. Right. And then when I wanted to write a book about his life. He sort of channeled mm. the whole book through me and told me what his life was like when he was an Apache warrior in Northern Arizona. And then what his lives were like when he was a, a uh, spirit guide and, and helping other people through their lives, their earthly lives. And uh, today he's mine. So uh, I learned a lot about Native American culture and had this connection through, uh, through Whitefeather. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's interesting. You know, I, I keep going back to, you know, my draw to that area and why I'm going to go back out there again this year uh, to spend some time in the mountains and to, uh, you know, visit some of these, these really interesting places. There's, there's something unique about, you know, the American Southwest. And, and again, I, you know, you know, I, I tend to be a very empirical person, you know, I, I'm not a faith-based or faith-driven person, you know, it's just, I didn't grow up in that environment. And yet there are some areas that, for some reason, I just feel connected to, and it's yeah. there's really no way to explain it. Well, I think as you as you come out here and you explore the Superstition Mountains, you should uh, you should reduce your essentials to a loincloth and some moccasins, <laughs> and and try to find water and food yeah. on your own. And that'll give you the full experience, John. 
Yeah, I can hear my wife laughing out there. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, and actually Christine did say, uh, I know painting for me is healing. This goes back to the painting conversation and a way to express emotions that are buried deep within. Yeah. Chris, Christine has been doing a lot of painting as well. So, so I think you, you and her seem to have an awful lot in common, uh, in terms of how you think about the paintings, how you use the color. Um, so you guys ought to connect up sometime just to kind of, kind of talk about painting. I think would be cool. That would be wonderful. She's a inspirational woman. As you are as well, Garrett. Um, so, <laughs> I, you, you know, as I expected, this half an hour went extremely fast. Now, if people wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Well, they can reach me through Western Spirit Enrichment Center. The that, that email is info at westernspiritranch.com. Info? Info at westernspiritranch.com. Okay, and I'll put that up on and the screen learn, in case anybody wants to see it. And learn about our retreats. Okay. Westernspiritranch.com. Well, heck then, I got it wrong. <laughs> Western Spirit Ranch. I forgot the ranch part. All right. And, and you're free to reach me personally if you want to talk about paintings or books or anything else at CowboyGL. Mm -hmm. At Comspeed, C O M M S P E E D dot net. It must be a local uh, provider. It is. Yeah. Local provider. Yes. Awesome. Cowboy GL at comspeed.net. You got it. Amazing. Thanks, John. Amazing. So, so what's next for you, Garrett? Oh, well, we're trying to um, expand our retreat business, invite even more people every year. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, before we were on the air, maybe you have Marion do a, a, bot, a podcast and talk about her individual spiritual counseling and spiritual healing, which she does besides what she does at, at our retreats. Uh, many people call her or connect with her through Zoom and do individual spiritual healing. Um, it's about helping people heal their past wounds and, and uh, traumas that they've suffered in the past and learn some new ideas and, and tools and resources. So they can live a, a life of, of joy and peace and happiness and freedom, no judgment. And yeah. kindness. That's what it's all about. I, I believe we're all here to take care of each other. I agree. Absolutely agree. And Christine says, thank you, Garrett. You are an inspiration as well. Thank you, Christine. You are as too. And uh, put a good word in for me with your wife, because uh, I haven't asked her yet to be on the podcast, but now I definitely got to get her on. So hopefully she's going to be <laughs> open to that. So. She would uh, uh, be joyful to do that with you. Yes. Right. Thanks, Jim. All right. Well, thank you, Garrett, so much for being uh, with me this evening. And for everybody watching, thank you or, or listening. I appreciate it. And for those that listen on one of the podcast platforms after the fact, thanks. Happy trails. Happy trails. <laughs> Thank you so very much for joining me on the Art Talk Podcast, where it's my goal to bring artists together to talk about their craft. If you'd like to join me for a conversation, please reach out via email at johncoleartist at gmail.com or by visiting my website at johnrobertcole.com. So until next time, keep crafting, painting, and inspiring others with your creativity. You make more of an impact than you know. See ya.